In this video, I'm gonna share with you some ways on how to pick the right color palette for your design project. Being a designer, we always have a different client in a different industry, in a different space, and we need to make sure that we're selecting the right colors for that specific purpose and specific time. And the thing is, we can go on sites like Dribble, as you can see, they've got lovely designs. We can just copy palettes from there. You know, I get inspired all the time and it's okay to copy colors, right? It's, it's fine. We can also go to places like Behance where there's beautiful branding projects and you can see some amazing designs here, you know, that give those vibrant colors. And it's okay, we can use these as inspiration. But at the end of the day, what we need to realize is that each client is different, each target audience is different. So what are the key questions we need to ask ourselves before we pick a color palette? The first question is, who is the target user? We need to understand that the target user might be in a certain nation or country that have different meanings when it comes to certain colors. So I know for me in Australia, when I think of like the color green, it means like, it can mean money, it means go at the traffic lights. When I think of red, it's like, okay, danger, um, stop now. If I think of like yellow or amber, it's, you know, it means slow down. It could also mean happiness, but in other countries, it will mean something different. For example, in China, yellow, can mean luck and it's also the element of the earth right but in other places it will be something different right so you really need to understand the target user where are they from what are their desires their fears you know what environment are they in and that will determine what type of colors will represent something to that specific person that's the question number one you need to ask yourself another question is you've got to ask anything about the heritage of the business so is the company 100 years old or 200 years old because they might have used a, a certain brand color for example they might have used like red for years and years and years and that brand color has a memory association in the mind of the consumer that they've had for many years right so if you come in and try and change the color completely different it might have a negative impact right so you want to make sure that check if there's any heritage with the brand if they need to re retain any certain colors that they've used for many years or else you need you might need to update just the secondary colors instead of the primary color and just leave it like that so make sure that you check for if there's a heritage or brand equity um, that's been there for a long time third question is how do you want to be perceived this goes back to when you do as a discovery phase with the client when you want to ask about the perception how do they want to be perceived is it discount is it premium is it a feeling of joy and, and happiness um, you really need to get down to how they want to be perceived by the marketplace and where they're heading in the future. Because you've got to remember, colors evoke emotion. And colors also connect relative to culture, language, tradition, belief system, society, right? So colors have connections with certain people and places and, and cultures. So we need to make sure that we get the right perception, that we want to be seen as the right thing. And, you know, typically when you think of tech companies, they all have, they want to appeal to like young people or millennials and they do like bright, vibrant colors, neon colors, blues and purples and all that cool stuff, um, which, which does work, right? So it's all about understanding who are you targeting, how you want to be perceived, do you want to, are you targeting young people, old people? And then lastly, you can always ask like, what evo emotions do you want to evoke? Do you want to evoke, you know, anger or tranquility or... A feeling of um, you know freshness organic right and typically sometimes you'll see like juice companies or health companies use like green or earthy tones the brown because it represents earth and herbs and you know the forest um, so that's pretty logical right sometimes you don't have to be directly logical with real world things but colors can be associated with real things in the real world where like animals nature plants all that stuff and that you can take that into account when you're bringing um, or presenting a palette to a client in your logo or brand identity presentations. If you understand these things and you understand how it connects with your target audience, then you're gonna pick better palettes for your clients. And also, you know, a bonus question could be like, is there any colors that you don't like or don't want to associate with? And the client might tell you, oh, I don't want this type of blue or I don't want purple or whatever the color is. They might, they will basically tell you. So you can probably stay away from that. But also remember, 
Do your research, look at the competitors in the market, what colors are they using? For example, if you're in the email marketing space, MailChimp is yellow, you might not wanna go yellow. Maybe you wanna go orange or blue or green. Um, you know, so think about the type of colors the competitors are using and go opposite from that. And that's gonna help you become distinctive. So thanks so much for watching guys. If you wanna learn more about design, you can actually join the Mura Academy. I have a link down in the description below. If you wanna dive deeper into design, into running a business and freelancing, not only do we cover things like colors, but I also talk about the whole brand identity process that's gonna help you out. So if you wanna sign up, you can definitely check out the page below and join an amazing community of designers that we grow and have calls every week. It's super fun and I love connecting with other designers. So thanks so much for watching. Remember to smash the like button and subscribe button because I do love posting design content every week to help you grow as a graphic designer so you can be the best high value designer you can be. Really appreciate it. Talk to you next time and I'll catch you in the next video.